Hi. So today I wanted to show you how you can create this kind of effect you can see on screen right now. So I'm having a bit of a light effect here with hard shadows where everything outside of my player's range is dark and essentially invisible as soon as it reaches the end of the radius of my light. So let me show you how I made this. Now, first of all, the clear color set in the environment on the project settings is set to black for this. That way I don't have to worry about any colors peeking through. Other than that, I have a fairly simple project setup. I have a static body collider here. That's one of my walls. I have a player character which can move around. Let me show you. It moves around slowly. And I have a background, which is just a sprite with open simplex noise on it to create this bit of a foggy background texture. And just to showcase, it's possible to have this effect on any background elements you're going to put, not just one background. I just set a Godot logo up here in the corner as well. Right, now let's make this work. First of all, of course, let's add a light to D node. Now we can keep the light to D mode on the mode add. We need to set a texture for it though. For the texture, I prepared this. This is just a white to black gradient, radial gradient, where of course the white is going to be representing light and the black is going to be representing darkness. Now let's set this on my light to D. What I want to do here is I want this to be scaled to fit well enough that it's just slightly larger than my entire camera view as a whole. Let's see, that's about 1.0.2, I think. Yeah, that's fine. And if we take a look here, the light radius is somewhere here around the player. Now it's not completely visible yet because we don't have the background effect I'm going to be adding in a moment, but it's a start. So. Next, let's go in the background and click on the material. Now the material is going to let us add a canvas item material, which changes how it interacts with light a bit. Now we are going to use the light only mode. Now you can already see this makes everything quite dark. Anything that currently isn't illuminated just becomes invisible and yeah, black. So that's how we can do this. The only thing really missing here now is the shadows coming from this object. So let's do that next. What we can do here is we can go on the wall and add a light occluder. It's right here under the light. Create a new occluder polygon 2D. And then start building it with some points here. Let's see. We want something like this and that. I can't actually see it properly right now. I should have disabled the lighting effect first. Actually, yeah, let me just disable that a moment. So I can properly move these points. Put that here. Put that here. And that's fine. And we don't even really need the icon anymore the shadows are gonna do their thing all on their own. I'm not actually sure why this is still complaining because an occluder polygon is set right there, but I guess it'll realize eventually. So next, what we still have to do is we have to actually enable shadows. Our light 2D node here doesn't actually know how to deal with shadows yet. So if we click on shadow here in the inspector, we can turn it on and we can see some slight shadow coming off here. Now this should become a bit more obvious as we re-enable the light only mode. And now let's go in game and take a look. And there we go, that's the effect we were going for. Now everything is quite dark and only area that should actually be reached by the light is being lit up. Everything else has this nice dark, perfectly black shadow. Now, since this doesn't affect the entire canvas, but only specific light layers, 
you can have objects, like in this case the player, which are on a different layer. If I click on the player sprite here, I just put it on the second light mask. That way it's completely unaffected by the entire light and darkness thing going on here. You can do the same thing for other sprites and essentially have separate lights for various layers. So all I really did from this point was create a few copies of this in move mode. Maybe scale them a little and place them around the player. And let's see, that's exactly the effect we're going for. Can't fit through there, my collider's too big. There we go. And of course, the Godot logo, hidden in the darkness as well, because it uses the background's material. If I click here on the Godot logo, it actually has set to use the parent material. Now another thing we can do, because it's actually hard to see anything right now, is we can create a copy of the light that we just put here, that we set to editor only, and make quite large. See, make the default size for now. Let's turn off shadows on this one. So now we have an additional light that just lets us see everything normally well, relatively normally in the editor, but in game you can't see it at all. It's just easier to edit our scene that way and really be able to see what we're doing. That's how you can create this kind of lighting effect. That will be all for today. Bye.